Good evening, gamers. Welcome to another episode of the What I'm Playing Now podcast. We are up to episode 15 here. My name is Joe Luzzi. With me, as always, is my co-host, Greg Martin. How you doing today, sir? Dude, it is cold again. Imagine that. It is freaking <laughs> cold out there. I am tired of this crap. I'm tired of cleaning snow. I'd almost rather have summer be here already and cut the grass once every week or two. As just cleaning snow every other day is just for the birds, for the penguins. Yeah. Who the hell knows? For, for the penguins, they they want the snow, Joe. Yeah, I'm not a penguin. Even wow. though I'm a Linux admin, I'm not a penguin. I was going to say, you better watch what you say there, buddy, because uh, <laughs> somebody's going to be listening to this, and they're just going to be like, what? <laughs> yes, yeah, this 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 is just way too cold, way too much snow. I'm just I'm I'm tired of this. Yeah, I'm I'm I hate going down in the morning and then. Hoping, hoping my car is going to start. So just it does not take this cold weather very well. And the reason I know that is because that one day, what was it last week when it was like fifty some odd degrees? Mm-hmm. Things started up like a charm, man. Didn't fight me in the least. <laughs> and every morning since then, as you go down. <laughs> that's exactly what it sounds like, by the way, for everybody who's never started a car in the cold. Sounds like a, a dying llama. Yeah, you, and then you have to sit there and wait five, ten minutes for it to warm up because if you don't, it's so cold, your breathing starts freezing the inside of your windows. And then, God forbid, you turn on the freaking defroster too soon, and then you just freeze up your whole window and you can't see, and you have to stick your head out the window like I did the other day and pull into a parking lot. <laughs> What the fuck? I just would have given. I just would have given up and gone home at that point, man. It's like whatever. I had just pulled out of the street and I flipped on the the defroster too soon. Oh. And it literally just instantly frosted on my window and I couldn't see Did shit. You... I literally had to roll down my window and pull in a parking lot till it warmed up. <laughs> what? Did you let your car sit for a couple minutes only? Oh, now, dude, obviously, gotta... obviously not long enough. Oh, so you got to let your car sit for like a half hour now. Oh, screw that. That's what I do. I ain't got. I ain't got time for that. Nobody, nobody got time for that. that. Nobody got time for that. For that. <laughs> <laughs> Bitches. All right. You can send us emails to what I'm playing now at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at what I'm playing now. Uncle Greg's picture of the week he was drawing right before the show started. He says I, he has two pictures for us. I got one more. Th- I'm not done yet. Oh my god! I gotta finish. Oh my god! We were. I was stretching out the whole intro. It was. It was my fault. Hang on. I gotta finish drawing the unicorn. Hang on a second. All right. So Greg's still drawing. Give me one, give me one do, second. Do, 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 I'm done. Okay. Do, here we go. Do, do share them. Okay. I'm only gonna share the one. The other one's gotta come later. Okay. Um, these are actually both for friends of the show. Um, the first one is for Walt, who humbly requested that I do this because I posted earlier that I didn't have a fucking clue what I was going to draw for tonight. And well, because you were, you were asking everybody on Google Plus. <laughs> yes. Yes, and Walt, Walt replied, Walt's brilliant idea was, why don't you draw a picture of you thinking about drawing a picture? And I thought, brilliant. You know, what? how can that go wrong? And because I'm under a serious time constraint today, this is what we got. It's me... Trying to draw and a unicorn. That's not really a unicorn. That's the <laughs> furthest thing from a unicorn, there, sir. That's. A, <laughs> I don't even know what the fuck that is. I, I like this right here. What's that? I don't understand. Dude, what that I've never is. seen a unicorn have a beak <laughs> like uh, Daffy Duck before. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you have going on there. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Uh, uh, I, I, some kids are going to have nightmares now tonight because of this. I just, you know, see, look, this is the mastery of this thing. See, you know, there, there you go. It's a unicorn with a beak that the, the horn's not necessarily attached to his head. And then this was me thinking about drawing. And, and that looks like you. That looks it like does. It, it's, it's a perfect match. You know, and... I think this is probably the best thing I've ever drawn in my entire life. Hands down. Yeah, I mean, it looks like you have your detachable penis there, so... (laughs) One of the few latent skills that nobody's aware of other than Joe. Um, 
I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. On to the news. <laughs> hey, we, 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 we just we, need to move on to we, the news. We officially just, yeah, this turned into what I'm wishing I didn't say now. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, I don't I don't even know where, where the show's going anymore now. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just gone. It's just all downhill. Uh, yes. Uh, so the second image will be coming later. Uh, I'm going to work on it while we're doing the show because it's actually for another friend of the show. So, and, and this is cool. a special, this is a special request. So we shall do the news. I shall keep drawing and hilarity will ensue. Sounds like a plan. All right. First news story. I can't remember if I touched on this last week at all. And I should I, remember considering I did the show last week and you weren't here. That's right. I can't, I, I can't remember. I, I ducked out. Well, your internet's good and back up, and you're with um, a new provider, and it appears to be working uh, better than ever. Yeah, so, you know, at t you can go fuck yourself. There um, you go. Thanks for calling, literally. <laughs> no pun. Um, new stories. First one, Ashron's Call. Yes, my MMO of choice, and my friend for the past 14 years... Um, is getting its final update, uh, monthly update. One of the one of the really nice things I liked about Ashron's Call over the years, um, when the game first came out, they basically released monthly updates. Now MMOs normally get updates. A lot of them get updates every couple of months, um, every so often. Uh, but Turbine actually stated from the beginning, it's a it's a game that's going to get monthly updates, and they pretty much stuck to that schedule. There were a few times throughout the 14 years, um, like when they were working on the last expansion that came out. Eight years ago, or 2005, or whenever that came out, nine years ago, um, where they missed several months while they were doing that, and a couple other times in between. But pretty much out of that, most of that 14 years, there was um, always an update every month that you can expect. Right. Which, as far as MMOs go, is is something that was really, I think, unique in the industry, um, and and you know, as far as that genre of gaming goes. Well, it's all, it's all, it's also kind of unheard of, right? So these MMOs. It seems like these MMOs are kind of, I don't want to say this without sounding like an asshole or like I don't know what I'm talking about, but it seems like they only get updates for, well, the updates are few and far between and they stop relatively quickly. I, more recently, I think think some of the newer games are coming out with um, more updates. Like when I played Rift, their updates were much more frequently, maybe like every two, two and a half months. Okay, but I, but I never seen but I never saw um, a publisher or producer or you know a company basically developer do a monthly do a monthly update like this to to a game to an MMO. Hmm. I mean, so there there are some there are some other games that are releasing them like like I said much in a much more frequent fashion, and I think because the way people play this game, these games, and go through the content, they, they realize they kind of need to. They need to be, be pumping out that new content into the game if they want to keep that player base and that subscription level high. Right. So this is one of the cool things always with Ashron's Call. They had the monthly update, um, and one of the one of the developers, I think he's the producer for the game right now, he's probably one of the only ones left, um, posted in the forum saying that the February update, which is going to be, which is supposed to be a pretty big update, usually twice a year they had um, what they call like bigger updates, which usually brought like new things into the game and stuff, uh-huh. rather rather than just maybe on like some smaller quests or where they updated monthly kill tasks and things like that. Um, for the last one, they're actually adding in some new things in the game. There's a new Coliseum which is coming in here. A Coliseum is uh, kind of like their version of a horde mode. Where basically you and a group of people go through like um, a coliseum and just fight different waves of mobs, um, and just try to reach the end of the coliseum. And I've been through the current coliseum before, and it's it's kind of challenging, um, but it's it's been around for years and people have pretty much mastered it. So this new one is supposed to be for like really really top end high end players um, that are probably maxed out, and um, it's supposed to be a big challenge. So. I'm, Really interested to see how long this is going to take for the player base to master and and learn and figure out um, before before you know somebody writes a whole write up on there. They're also coming out with um, some Paragon weapons, which are basically going to be weapons you can um, enhancements you can do to your weapons to level them up. 
um, an enlightenment system, which sounds completely insane. Once you reach max level, you can actually take your character back down to level one and get plus one to all your stats and then do it over again. And I think you can do this up to a total of five times. Okay. So you can basically take your character to max level five times. And Holy at the end shit. of that, your character would have like a plus five dollar stats, I think is what I've been told, if I'm understanding that correctly. Um, which sounds... That sounds crazy, dude. Like, that's just... Insane. Yeah. That sounds yeah. insane. But now, with that, considering the amount of time you've invested in that game, would you There's do something like that? No way I would do that. <laughs> There's no way I would drop my character. There are some interesting things with that. You get to retain like all your augmentations, so it's not like you're going to be like a true level one character. There's a lot of different high end stuff you get in this game. Um, like augmentations are things you can do to enhance your character like you can when you die you drop items on your death on death you can actually right. get an augmentation that will mm. that you can do like aug augment yourself five times to where you then then no longer drop items on your on death okay and there there's a bunch of augmentations you can get there's um and they're on a timer uh, that on how often you can do these quests to get the augmentation gems and it takes you a while to actually fully augment your character. And then after that, once you hit like level 200 or so, they have Luminance, which is high-end XP, which I have I have not maxed out Luminance yet. I've pretty much come close to fully augmented my, augmenting my character. But as far as Luminance, Luminance is just a whole other grind that I was never even interested in doing. Um, so you get to keep all the augmentations. It's kind of cool. It sounds like there's some really neat stuff that they're going to be adding into this patch, but they also stated that this is going to be the last one. They said they're probably just going to be doing bug fixes after this. Um, they're so, actually. So I mean, I guess the thing is, is this indicative of them kind of shoring up the end of the project, or like them moving on to something else? Well. I think what they're concentrating on right now is Turbine's actually working on that Infinite Crisis game, which is a new MOBA, which is like a Dota 2 and League of Legends. Right. Infinite Crisis is the one that's based around the you know comic book characters. So um, I think they're concentrating most of their efforts on that because it sounds like Lord of the Rings and Dungeons and & Dragons Online will not be getting any expansions this year either. So it sounds like they're basically pulling everything off of all their projects and dumping dumping them onto Infinite Crisis. Okay. So, but they said they're not gonna they're not gonna be shut down the servers. Um, they said that they're actually working on something to where the current customer base may be able to play for free for Ashron's Call if you have a current if you have an active account. They're gonna try to maybe get the game to go free to play. How that will work, I'm not sure. But the other thing that they're trying to work on for the end of the year is running your own server. They're going to give out the server software to where you can run your own server, which really? I have never heard of before. That's crazy, I've, dude. That's... I've, I've heard of people, you know, back engineering, backward engineering and trying to do some of these servers and coming up with stuff, but they're actually going to be giving you the software to run your own. They're not going to let you have the source code, but they're just going to give you the software. <laughs> they'll, give you the, they'll give you the server component. I mean, so which to me sounds really awesome. I would, I wouldn't mind running my own server. Dude, yeah, if you that, ever that run your people could play on, if you run your own AC server, I will actually start playing the game. It would, it would be really interesting. I wouldn't mind doing that. So, even Kim said she said that sounds. She said that would be kind of neat if you could do that. So. Yeah, we speaking of running our own servers, man, we need to do something with fucking I mean, we've been trying to set this up for a while, like something with Minecraft or something with Terraria or something like that. Well, I think I think what we need to do later on in the episode or we could do it right now. Um, I think we just need to pick a day each each week where we want to do let maybe like a live stream or something. Oh yeah, man. And pick a game for the week and just sit down and play it for a couple hours. I was thinking about that this past week. I think that'd be really cool because then we could put that video up on the site. Because those are the things I'd actually like to start getting more on the site. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and now that I'm not on AT and T anymore, and I actually have decent bandwidth, right? Uh, you know, and with my little adventure with Twitch yesterday, I think we could actually pull it off quite nicely. Um, yeah. 
so yeah, I, yeah, I think we should commit to a day a week and then, you know, just like two or three hours that day, just play the game, you know, horse around typical bullshit, you know, that sounds fine to me. I'll let you talk about the next story. Cause you posted it. The Daisy team doubles down with new developers. Yeah, I mean, this isn't really anything. I mean, the story I posted wasn't really that big of a deal. It's just like, oh, the Daisy team is basically doubling the uh, development team for the project. And Daisy is how many people were on that team to begin with? Because I thought it was just a couple of guys or something that was just that, or one or two guys that did Daisy. Yeah, it wasn't many because Daisy started out as a uh, Arma Two mod, right? And then it kind of just blew up into its own project. And I don't understand how the fuck that happened because DayZ, when it came out, was so horrible, dude. So fucking horrible. And people just uh, somebody kept playing liked it. it. I, well, clearly. But I don't – because I don't like it. And because I don't like it, nobody should like it, yeah, right? I, that's not, that's <laughs> I thought that's the way the world worked. That's what I thought too. But Are you uh, telling me it doesn't? Because if it doesn't, I'm going to start running out of the house screaming right now. Uh, you might want to. And take oh your shirt God. off while you do it. Okay, <laughs> it's warm enough out there, right? Yeah, exactly. You put your put your shorts on. Um, so yeah, basically they're doubling up the project, uh, the development team to the project. So expect to see more action on the uh, good old Daisy front, which I know all you Daisy whores will be loving that one. Uh, the interesting thing out of the article I took away from it was uh, the project lead for Daisy, uh, Dean Hall, is actually going to be leaving Bohemia Interactive, and he's going to be starting his own team at some point. Um, I saw that, and I was reading some of the stuff he was saying. I was That's, that's kind of interesting. Yeah, and they're, they're saying it's not... Like, him leaving and starting his own team has nothing to do with the DayZ development team doubling up. Uh, and I'm not sure how much weight he had over there. I mean, I know he clearly started the, started the mod, uh, but I'm not sure, you know, what his what his weight was on that project at that point in time or whatever. Uh, I, I would be interested to see, you know, what he does after this. And I just, I, I hope for the sake of people that play DayZ, you know, that this brings the, you know, exciting, breathtaking, exhilarating, fuzzy updates that you all wanted because this thing was a piece of shit and I hated it. I still do. I, mean, it's, it, I think it's the worst thing ever, but... You know, if you like it, there it is. Yeah, I've never played it. I've seen, um, I've seen it and watched a few videos on it. Nothing very long, just a little bit. I mean, it just looked like, I don't know, just looked like an FPS shooter to me. I mean, it didn't look like anything that was that good. But it sounds right. like they're they're adding in some newer stuff to the game. Yeah. I mean, a lot of the complaint I had with it was the damn control, man. I mean, it was just, it was so bad when I played it, and I know it wasn't my equipment because I've got decent gaming equipment for my mm-hmm. PC. Um, I mean, it just felt really stiff, and I, I I don't know. I was never really big into Arma Two to begin with, and maybe that might have had something to do with it because it is an Arma Two mod. Well, at least it was originally. It's, it it kind of feels like how uh what happened with Dota, right? Right. Dota, Dota started out as what a WoW mod, and then it kind of just blew up into its own thing. And this is what's happening to Daisy. Yeah. Um. Like I said, I, I you know more power to the people that like the project. I just I just thought it was interesting that it's actually gained this much traction that they're like, oh, we need more people to do this. Yeah, not a WoW mod. It was a Warcraft three mod. Oh, Warcraft. Okay, I thought it was a WoW mod. Okay, so Warcraft three mod. Don't shoot me. So, MMO yeah, gamer yeah, let's, people. Yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah, let's 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 not get you in trouble down that road. <laughs> oh, I I hope they send me an email. <laughs> All right, Nintendo is going to start a healthy business to improve your quality of life. Yeah, or as, as some might put it, Q O L. What are they smoking at Nintendo, dude? You're cool. They're smoking cool. What are they smoking <laughs> at Nintendo? So th- the way it sounds... Uh, well, first of all, I found this on CNET, right? And I usually take shit I find on CNET with like 95,000 pounds of salt, right? But I, I bit a little bit because the thing is, is I always thought... I've, I've always maintained for a while now Nintendo's been in trouble. 
everybody knows Nintendo's in trouble. I mean, the Wii U sales are total shit. Yeah, well, now they're the Wii U sales aren't doing good. Nintendo isn't really in trouble though. They have Wii money. But that's so that's all banked they're not, money. They're not that's, hurting. But that's banked money, right? I mean, they're going to eventually end up tapping into that at some point, and then they're going right. to be screwed. I, I, Close to it. I, they 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 still have. I I, I think they're the Wii U is going to hurt them. I don't think it's going to bankrupt them. Well, no, but they need to find something else, though, because it's clearly not going to be the cash cow that's going to lead them into the next generation, right? Right. They are going to have to come out with something else. Sooner or later, they're going to um, have to just come out with another console. Yeah. And, and, it, just, and just, you know, bless, well, bless the Wii U and say goodnight to it. That's kind of what this article is indicative of, but it's kind of shy on details because the new president wasn't really... Uh, he was more cagey about details than people would have liked. But it looks like they may be looking to do something with um, what they call quality of life, which is using multimedia and gaming and entertainment of that sort to promote a healthy lifestyle. Right. And I think a lot of this came from the fact that despite the fact that that nobody really had, I mean, I, I never owned a Wii, and I know very few people that actually did own one, but the people that did own one, you know, one of the primary things that they bought for that was the Wii Fit. I have I have a Wii, and I have a Wii Fit. And, <laughs> and well, that's my, that's my point. So it would be, if the Wii would get more use, it goes to, it may be go to assume that, uh, look at me with my grammar, that uh, people use the Wii Fit more than most anything else. And I know that when I played the Wii, it was mostly for, you know, like the baseball or some of the yes. Wii Fit games. And I wasn't playing it for, you know, like Resident Evil or Final Fantasy or anything like that because, frankly, I, I all those experiences on that console were just really bad. Um, and I think Nintendo wants to try to tap into that. I think they want to try to take that idea and run with it, despite the fact that they're coming under fire from most of their... Uh, you know, partners or anybody else who gives them advice is saying, no, you really need to try to figure out, you know, figure out something else for pulling in money. Um, I think if they can do it right, they may have a market there. Yeah, Wii Fit was actually rather interesting. It was an inter interesting device. Um, some of the games on there seemed kind of silly. Some of the yoga stuff that they did on there was was really, you know. Halfway decent, I'd say, for yoga. I yeah. mean, it, it, they they had a bunch of different you know positions and poses and stuff on there. Well, it's about um, as decent as it can get for freaking dance, right. dance revolution like yeah. yoga. You know what I mean? Um, but the we 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 played the week quite a bit. Now I don't know if you heard. This is one story I didn't throw on here, but I'll throw this out there. I don't know if you had heard about it this week. Um, Nintendo's actually shutting down the servers for the Wii as well as the Nintendo DS. So a lot of the online games for the Wii and DS are going to be um, coming to a halt here. I think it's in April is what I heard. Holy shit. So no, I didn't hear that. Right about the time that they are releasing the next version of Mario Kart for the Wii U, you won't be able to play Mario Kart on the Wii anymore online. Hmm. So... Um, it's it'll be interesting to see what they actually do for this health to come out with it to promote like this healthy lifestyle or give you better quality of life. What what's all going to be involved here? Is this going to be any sort of wearable computing? Because that seems to be some of the big stuff this you know in the last year or so. You know everybody coming out with the Fitbits and stuff like that. I mean they can there's so many different avenues I think they could take with this stuff um, and well, tie it into different things. The second I go to a doctor, which, granted, I'll just throw this out here. I don't go to any doctors because I don't fucking trust them as far as I can throw them. But if I ever do go to one and he writes me a prescription for a Wii, that's probably going to be the <laughs> best prescription of my life. <laughs> Even though I don't want one, I, I'll still take it anyways because how often do you go to your doctor? He's just like, go buy a gaming console. Sweet. And if it's covered, covered under insurance, why the hell not? I mean, yeah. Keep, keep in mind like what you were saying earlier. 
the Wii outsold the PS3 and the 360 by a long shot in this last... And, right. it's, st- and it's still holding that lead. No one has caught up to them to, to, to touch them. Right, but this... Sold. But it's... I mean, you look at it from the numbers, but then you look at it from a practical standpoint, too. And the, and the, the truth is, is that the people that are buying this, I, they're not around here. Well... The, the, Nobody, like except for you, has a Wii. <laughs> well, no, no, because I know Brian, the one guy we do the Linux podcast with. I know he had a Wii. Well, he doesn't count. Um, and I there's there's other people I know that have Wiis, but I think the big thing was when the Wii came out, it was at that price point to where it was your second console, and that's what it was for me. I mean, I had the 360 originally, and instead of when the PS3 came out, it was just way too overpriced because it was 600 bucks initially. Right, right. Um, so when the Wii came out that same week as the PS3, it was just price positioned and had that control mechanism that was just, you wanted to try it. And I, I think it just had something to it that families just gravitated towards because it could pull everybody in and do the bowling, and that the initial disc that came with the Wii is probably the best set of games that were released on the Wii. You right, know, but the isn't bowling, it, the baseball, the golf, boxing, right? But Wii isn't sports. that isn't that a testament to the problem with the Wii though? Is yes. that it is? Oh, definitely. It's the shiny. They have the shiny problem, which is where you see the tech, you see the initial software, and then everything else after that fails to capitalize on what was present in that original software because nobody understood the model. Right. And to, to a lot of respects, they still don't. So, yeah. I, I, I mean, I just, I, I, that's what cracks me up about this. Is I fail to see how this console is making money when none of these software developers really understand how that model works. Well, for as many consoles as they sold, they made some money. Oh, dude, I would I would love to have their profit off of the Wii in my pocket, right? Yes, yes, you would. <laughs> I mean, I would not be living in Alliance, Ohio. No. If I, well, actually, no, I probably would be because I'm the kind of person where if I did have money, I would be hiding it. Yeah, it's yeah. They had they made some nice bank off of that, but like you said, it's it's only going to last them so far, and they do need to come up with something. I mean, they're still doing good with their 3ds and the 2ds now. Um, their handhelds are still selling pretty good. Um, I, I think still... they just—I think they just need to figure out what they what they're doing in the console market. Yeah, I was actually kind of shocked that you found out they were shutting down the servers for the uh, that the services for the Wii and the DS. Because, man, I, I will tell you this: when I did have a DS, and the games that had the Nintendo online functionality, mm-hmm. I mean, that was that was really good online service. Yeah. Really good. I mean, I remember playing, uh, what was it, the first batch of Pokemon games that came out on the DS, and I can't remember which ones those were. I Somebody's going to somebody's gonna correct me somewhere. They're like, eh, it was fucking like rainbow orange. But it, the online play for those was a phenomenal, man. Phenomenal. Yeah, it to me it does seem like it's kind of soon to be shutting some of those things down. I mean, especially, like I said... It's supposed to happen in April, and that's the same time that the new Mario Kart's coming out, and that's when they're turning down the old off the old services. So, I think they're really just trying to say to their customers, you know, that play that type of stuff. Hey, we're moving on to the Wii U. We're concentrating on that. You should as well. Hop yeah. on board with us to that. And I, it's it's probably one of their only options that they really have is try to just push people into the new hardware, which sucks, um, but. What are you going to do with the sales that they have right now for the Wii U? So, hmm. yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I still think Nintendo is is. I I I feel like Nintendo has turned into the Titanic that managed to patch a hole, but they patched it with like MacGyver shit, and it's still just on that brink where the, all that stuff can just fall apart and they can just sink. Or it, yeah. or it, or the reality could be that they're just too big to fail. And that's and that's possible, you know. I mean, they've been around forever, so I I can't I don't know. I just it, it bothers me that I grew up with a Nintendo with a Super Nintendo and seeing how wildly successful those things were and all their handhelds. And then you come to 
this generation with the Wii and the Wii U, and I have zero fucking interest in them. Zero. And it's disappointing to me. It's aggravating. Because I want them to succeed. I, I think they have a great history in gaming. I mean, they brought it back from the crash, for crying out loud. But uh, to, to me, it seems a lot of their games, there's there's really nothing new. It's all the same right. stuff. It's all the same stuff, just basically polished and and better for the next generation. It, they really haven't released many new characters, you know, over the years, or anything that's become as widely popular as some of their earlier stuff. So, hey, and I think, that, yeah, I think that was my other problem too. Was it, and I think I mentioned that before. Was there's no new IPs, there's no new characters. It's just constant rehashing of the same stuff over and over and over again just you know with flashier HD graphics and maybe a different landscape or two and I'm sure the way they're looking at it is you know if it ain't broke don't fix it you know don't change it you know let's yeah. not fix it it's not you know they're like hey it's not broken it's still se- Mario still sells you put Mario on anything he sells put Mario on a cart it sells put Mario running around it sells put Mario on my ass and that'll sell there you Boom. go it probably would alright we're moving on to Watch Dogs <laughs> baby <laughs> Yes, yes, what's going the on here? Game I, I was supposed to get on launch with my flipping PS4. Um, <laughs> right now, there's a lot of the retailers are saying that the release date is June 30th because they really don't have a release date for it yet. But on Twitter today, um, somebody from Ubisoft tweeted out um, the product manager said that this is from GameSpot, um, that this could be a big week for the developers. So there's supposed to be a new trailer coming out this week, um, possibly maybe a release date, we're hoping, um, and maybe any other sort of information. So, I mean, Watch Dogs is supposed to kind of, some people are saying it's gonna almost going to be the su- successor to um, Assassin's Creed, possibly even the next Assassin's Creed. Um because there are some things in Assassin's Creed 4 that kind of hint around um, to being the the same, how do we want to say this, fake game company that is inside Assassin's Creed is kind of in um, Watch Dogs. So I think there's some overlap in the story hmm. between some of the some of the fiction that's written for this stuff. So Okay. Yeah, It'll I don't yeah, I don't have a PS4, but I mean, this game looks amazing. Oh yeah, it's, this is a game I will be buying day one, and I will be stopping everything else to play it. <laughs> as if you already haven't stopped other things enough as it is. I died. I, 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 there's too many damn games right you're fucking, now. Your fucking backlog, man. You're, you're, by the time I Christmas next year so rolls around, you will just backlog. be finishing this year. It's unbelievable how backlogged I am. I don't even want to think about it. You haven't finished AC. You haven't finished P4. What else is there? Danganronpa. <laughs> still trying to play that. I got all the other games on the PC I want to still want to play. My whole Steam library. Oh, my God, dude. I don't, freaking even, don't even know what to do. Don't even know what to do. Just don't even know. What you need to do is you need to stop having that shiny squirrel syndrome. You need to, I, you need I to can't. Just, I can't. You need to nail down, finish your games... I mean, do what I do, right? Just find a game you like, and then power through it in a week. I, I did. I've done that before. But you, 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 but I'm telling you, dude, you you are guaranteed to finish a game that way. The, I just the, get I, too distracted too easily. Actually, I just lied because you won't finish a game because what happened with me was I got halfway through P3 and then got P4 and I haven't touched P3 since. See, so you got to see you. You're the same way. Uh, yeah, but I'm not as bad as you. Correct. I, w- I will admit, I have a problem. <laughs> you heard it here first. The first step to recovery is admitting you have a problem. Yeah, I have a problem. <laughs> but Kickstarter. Problem is, I suck. Kickstarter. Kickstarter doesn't have a problem. Apparently it, not. One billion dollars in pledges. And the games category is the biggest category overall. That's right. I, that was the only reason why I wanted to mention that. Because when I read that the games category was the biggest category, I was like, that's worth, that's newsworthy. That's actually oh, yeah. rather interesting. Yep. So yeah, I I've always been I don't know I personally I've always been weary of Kickstarter. Um, some of the 
there's always that problem. I mean, they, they have safeguards for if something, you know, bombs out for the project, right? Like, if it doesn't meet its funding goal by time, well, you're not... You know what I mean? But Some of the differences between, like, um, Kickstarter and, like, Indiegogo... Kickstarter, the... You only get the money if you reach your goal. Right. So if you're short of your goal, then you don't get any of the money, and, you know, if you had pledged anything, you obviously wouldn't be pay paying for that. Now, on something like an Indiegogo, where you could pledge stuff, Whatever you pledge, that person, company, whatever, gets. It does not come back to you. The minute you pledge it, you're giving them the money, and that's it. So Indiegogo, some of these different you know, sites like this are where you know, have different rules. Mm. So you kind of have to watch which, you know, with, with what you're doing. But with Kickstarter, if it doesn't reach the goal, no money is given to them. Um, one of the interesting things... During when Kickstarter first launched, April twenty eighth, two thousand nine, forty people pledged a thousand dollars, a thousand eighty four dollars, to seven projects, which I thought was kind of funny. It's it's still it's still a very scary proposition. At least to me, it is. You know, I don't know. I I, I kind of just. There's been wild success stories from Kickstarter, but there's also been wild failures from Kickstarter. You know, oh, yeah. I mean, you you have the Ouya that came out there. You have, oh my god, um, yeah. Double Fine's Broken Age, um, and so many different games that have come out of there um, recently that have had you know millions of dollars of funding um, that have been successful and are well on their way to being produced and developed. Um, some a lot of them released this year, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty cool. That's that's a that's a really neat milestone for them to reach. Awesome that gaming is the biggest category. It's the only reason why I wanted to talk about it. I you know what would have been really newsworthy is if the biggest category would have been uh, you know, funding the stealing of art pieces back from the Nazis. I think there's a movie like that. Really? What's it called? Is it on Netflix? If it's not on Netflix, I don't give a shit. No, what was that new movie that was just out in the past couple of months? Wait, wait, where, wait, was there really a movie about that? Where they were, I don't know if it was with the Nazis, but they were basically saving art from, I thought it was during World War II. I can't remember what the premise was like about that. Um, I don't I'll even, up later. I just, <laughs> Dude, seriously, there's a movie. There's I a didn't movie even know like there was this. a movie. I was just, it's George Clooney was just in it. I was just spouting total bullshit, and then he's just like, "Oh wait, no, there's an actual movie." I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> George Clooney was in it. The Monuments Men. The, hang on, I gotta look this up. Monuments Men. Yes, The Monuments Men was the name of the movie. Let's see here. It's playing in Oxford, Ohio. It's got like, and it was during the Nazis. It was yes. Holy they were, shit, man. <laughs> You must have had your TV on last night and subliminally heard this. Oh and my god! Started talking about it. I don't know. I don't know what the hell happened. I just like Bill totally... Murray's in it. John Goodman's in this. There's a bunch of people in this thing. It's got like a 34 percent rating on Rotten Tomatoes, though. I didn't say it was good. I'm just telling you that there was a movie out about what you were just talking Holy about. Holy shit, man! I did. I was just completely. I I I give up. I don't. I didn't even plan that. I didn't know this movie was out there. I'd never heard of it before. Kate Blanchett's in it. She's hot. Okay, now I feel like I have to watch this movie because I just kind of like channeled it by accident. Well, it's, it, we're, we normally talk about anime, not movies like this. So we're getting on to what I'm playing now. So Yes. yes I'm going to talk about Saturday I was able to sit down. Actually, I played some during the week as well. But Saturday was the time I got to spend most of the time with the Vita. And Danganronpa. Uh, I'm still liking this game. The story is still... Greg, you're going to have to eventually get this. I, I'll i probably pick it up this weekend. Because it's... It's almost more like a visual story the more I play it. That's my kind of the, game, man. The court, the court cases and the mini games in the court cases are a much smaller part of the game than the actual interactions with the other characters and just the story. And it's just... 
huh. it's just it's just so cool. I don't, I don't even know what else to say about it. It's it's just a one of the best stories I think I've ever writ, written read through and um, played through. I almost said written. It's one of the, you know, one of the best stories Joe ever made. Yeah. Um, wish I did. It it's the the story is just really really cool. And like I said, I really don't want to talk too too much about the story because it is so much of a story based game. If I go into any bit of the story, it's going to be giving away huge spoilers. So talking wow. about the game's kind of hard. Well, I'm sorry. I should. I probably should so. have picked this up at the same time you did. That way. Well, no, not really, because even if I did, it pro- we probably had the same problem we have with P4. Yeah, you would have played. You would have been finished with it already, and I'm like, oh, hang on, I'm like on the second act or something, you know. <laughs> so I don't know why I play games like that. I don't. I don't understand. I just. I. I find a game I like it, and I just end up powering the hell through it. I, well, I don't get it. One of the other things I hear, and I'll jump ahead in what I'm playing now, or in, in my list, I'll jump ahead a little bit. Go like, through, like man. When, like when I had played Diablo three. Mm-hmm. I mean, I had played through that game in a couple of weeks, and literally in two to three weeks, put eighty hours into it. Nice, over eighty actually. And um, Loot Two Point Oh was just um, released this past week, so Loot Two Point Oh on the PC is basically what the console editions of Diablo Three have had pretty much all along. When the game was when Diablo Three was released on the PC, they had the auction houses available to everybody on the PC. It was um, both a gold auction house, gold money, what they call like a gold money auction house, which you can use um, your in-game gold to buy stuff off of, or they had a real money auction house, which is where you can actually spend real money to buy the in-game items that people put up there on the auction house. Right, I remember hearing about that. Yeah, I spent my gold to buy pretty much equip most of my character. Um and I had bought some, I bought, since I was high level very early on, I was buying really, really good items for a good price before the market pretty much went batshit crazy. Um, and my guy was pretty much decked out um, for, you know, he didn't have the best loot, the best loot, the best armor weapons, but I had better than average. And I would say more than 75 to 85% of the stuff, I think, was pretty much gotten through the auction house. I don't think I got really many, if any, really good drops that I could actually use for the high-level end game. So when Loot 2.0 came out this past week, they're shutting down the auction houses in a couple of months. Um, Loot 2.0 is basically taking... took the loot system and just kind of flipped it on end, and your drops are much better now. And I will say, I went through one dungeon the other day, and within that one dungeon, I think I replaced two pieces of my armor that were way better than anything I had purchased long time ago off that auction house. <laughs> just in one I dungeon, that. I, I had found two pieces, that, and I was just like, wow. I go, they did really change this loot drop, because I remember what this was like back in the day, and it sucked ass. And if I can, <laughs> find, if I can find two usable pieces of loot within one dungeon, I may actually have to go back and replay through some of that game, and I may be interested in playing the expansion now. Hmm. Interesting. I still have I, I still have not played D three, so I'm kind of like trying to follow along based on my experiences from you know playing games similar to that. Yeah, but I mean, it was it was I was really surprised because like the first couple pieces of items that dropped, I really wasn't even paying attention. I was like, eh, yellow item, yellow item, no big deal. And then I actually started looking and comparing the yellow items to what I had, and I'm like, hmm. This weapon is actually better than what I have, and it is actually significantly better. I was now, like, "Holy crap!" <laughs> now, is, is on D three with the with the color ratings? Is it similar to what it was on Cube World? Yeah, yeah, I think so. So I think wasn't it wasn't it the uh, the golds on Cube World were, were the like the the it's god high. equipment. Yeah. yeah, I think I think I think it was, and I think that's how it is on Diablo three as well. I think gold okay. is, I think gold is some of the highest. I don't know if there's anything beyond gold. Um, there might be. I think orange is beyond gold. Okay. Um, if, if I remember correctly, God, it's been so it, long since I have played Diablo three. I can't remember. So I saw my buddy playing D three on the three sixty, and he had like a bunch of mods installed on it, and and his character had like these ungodly stats. I mean, it was just. He, they were basically god mods, and mm-hmm. I have I have zero interest in shit like that. 
I really do. See, I played, I played through Diablo three normal. I mean, I mm-hmm. played through, reg, I played through three times, and basically <laughs> got through. Well, each each at a different level difficulty level. Okay. And made it up to the fourth difficulty level, nightmare or whatever the hell it's called, and it was literally almost impossible back in the day, because you got through like the you got to like the second act of that final level mm-hmm. and unless if you had that top, that top highest end gear that was just going for batshit crazy amounts of dollars on the auction house you weren't going to be finishing the game and i got i had played through the game 3 times at each each progressively difficult different you know different level difficulty level and made it through that fourth and final one and got through the first act and into the second act and like just smacked into the biggest and thickest wall I've ever seen in my life. And it was, it, the game just wasn't even fun. The game yeah, went from was. enjoyable to just, I'm not even interested in, I literally j- j- just stopped playing it like overnight and it was like, I'm just completely done with this game. I don't even want to look at it anymore. Really quick, how many games have you played that have ended up like that? Can you think of? I'm just curious. There aren't too many games that I've actually played through multiple times. That's one of the first games that I've done multiple playthroughs. Okay. I'm, I normally don't do... If I can make it through... Think, look at who you're talking to. If I can make it through a fucking game, I'm lucky. <laughs> let alone play through it three freaking times and try to start it a fourth time. I tell you what, I, I will I will go out on record and saying that I, I love P4. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite games ever. Um, on very hard though, it is about damn near impossible. I'm I'm still chugging through it, but it's there are moments where, like you said, you hit that wall and it just literally is not fun anymore. Yeah, I had that I had that problem with the Halo games. There was one Halo game I managed to beat on Legendary, and that was Halo Two. But the other like Halo and Halo Three. Fuck them. You get so far in that game, and it's—I mean, it's not fun anymore. Just you want to put your fist through the TV or throw your controller at, at you know the person who's sitting next to you and just beat them with it. It's not, you know, the game. I don't understand how people think that kind of stuff's fun because it just—it's aggravating. Obviously, somebody enjoys it, and they're—they're not—are—they're not us. But I—I I agree with you. It was—I just when 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 it just gets to be the point where you're walking down a hallway and you just get annihilated, and then you're. You're just repeatedly trying to do it just to get past one mob. It's something's just imbalanced there. What does that remind you of? Remember that skull bowl on Cube World? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Dude, I forgot that thing about for like, that. We've okay. So here's the story. That we, had to have been a half hour fight at we, least. We when we first bought Cube World, Joe and I were playing online for. I mean, we played this game for fucking ever more than we probably should have. Oh, definitely. One one of the first boss mobs we encountered and, and was a skull bull. And the boss mobs are like thirty thousand times larger than the regular mob. I mean, it's the same mob, but it's just large, and they have ridiculous stats. Uh, the problem with Cube World was the leveling the leveling curve was very very steep. So early on, it was very difficult to level, and mobs were really hard to kill until you got to what like level forty or fifty. Yeah, and then and then it started plateauing a bit, and leveling was easier, and the mobs just got ridiculously easy. Um, but I think we were what like thirteen or fourteen, and we found that skull bowl, and we fought that fucker for like a half hour. At least, and we were yeah, and we were actually going toe to toe with him, and my client crashed, yeah, and, <laughs> and I just... couldn't get back into it. And then Joe died. <laughs> We almost oh. had him dead too. Oh, I know that was we, we were. Sucked. You want to talk about the ultimate kiting experience? <laughs> That's it. That was it. <laughs> if there was a video on how to kite a mob, we could have recorded that and probably made money <laughs> off of that. <laughs> <laughs> the kiting tutorial for for tanking boss mobs when you're going toe to toe with them. That's us. Good lord, that was just completely insane. Oh, I know. It, it, my finger hurt so bad because in order to do that dodge, you had to tap. You had to actually yes. press the middle mouse button. And you can't re you, at the time in that game, you couldn't remap the keys like that. Mm-hmm. So you just you had to keep pressing that middle mouse button. I can't imagine what would have happened if you were playing that game and didn't have a middle mouse button. Hey, you, would be, 
You wouldn't be dodging. No, I mean, <laughs> you, you just would have been dead the whole way through. God, if it, I wish we had that on video. That would have been yeah, an that awesome been video. <laughs> oh, man. Well, talk about some of the stuff you've been playing, and then I'll get back to some of the stuff I did later on. Right, so uh, I'm clearly still enjoying my experience with uh, Lightning Returns. Um, eh, I'm fine now that I'm really late in the game. I'm, in fact, I'm pretty sure if I if I can give myself five more hours, I'll beat the game. Uh, nice. but I am finding that the end of the game is very stale because what happens is. <sighs> This game's really interesting for the Final Fantasy series because it's one of the few that is extremely non-linear, right? And by non-linear, I mean you can actually complete the main quests and they have no detrimental effect on on the overall storyline because all they do is they give you the items you need to increase the lifespan of the world so you can play up to the 13th day, which is how you get the best ending. Because uh, you originally start out with five days and you need to complete quests in order to extend the lifespan of the world. Um, but there's no overall, you know, there's no overall arcing detriment to the story of the game if you complete the main quest before any of the side quests, which is what I did. Um, but you can burn through those side, cr- side quests really, really quick. And that's what happened with me. So now I literally have like nothing to do except for run around and just fight things and wait for the time to run out. So I can see the rest of the game, and it's it's actually kind of weird. I I don't like it. That's that's really odd. Yeah, I I don't understand how you could have like somebody would have sit there thinking like maybe this would have happened if somebody were playing the game, you know, or at least figured out a way to stagger the quests so that they last longer. Which in and of itself is a problem because there are certain quests that do that, but it's annoying how it does it. Where it's like, you go and talk to somebody, but they only tell you part of the story and you have to come back to them the next day. Literally, you have to come back to them the next day. And then you go talk to them again and they don't tell you the rest of the story. You have to come back to them again another day. And then you go to talk to them again and they still don't tell you everything, so you got to go back to them on a fourth day. Literally, there's one where you have to go back to the same woman like four days in a row, which is just well, there bullshit. Was, there was some of that stuff, not to that extent, in Persona 4. Where you had to go find somebody one day, and then wait till like a certain day of the week they were in this area and go talk to them. Right, but it's not the the difference between Persona Four and Lightning Returns is with P Four you do not have this false sense of urgency like you need to stick your fucking nose to the grindstone to get this done. With Lightning Returns, you absolutely have that. Because that clock's always punching you in the face saying, this is what time it is. If you don't finish your shit by then, you're screwed. Okay. You know, and, and I think that's a lot of the problem is is that that timer throws you off a lot. Um, there are ways to deter it. You know, the timer doesn't go off when you're in battle. Certain ones. Um, if you run from a fight, it costs you an hour. Um, but I've never run from a battle, ever. I never really found a need to because I'm just that fucking awesome. And um, the the timer doesn't go off while you're in the menu customizing lightning. It also doesn't go off when you're in the hub. Um, so I mean, there's there's ways to get around it, but it just running around in general. It, it, I think it's like every I think it's like f- three or four in game minutes to one minute in like IRL. So it does code kind of fast. And some of these quests are actually kind of, I don't know, it, it, it's very sure. You, you kind of have to play it to understand what I'm talking about. Because it, it, it does it, it does throw you off. But overall, it, it's it's a really good game. I like it a lot. I, I think this is probably one of the better um, Final Fantasy games lately, I should say. So if, if, cool. you haven't played, if you haven't played it yet, I'd go grab it. It's Especially if you're a Final Fantasy whore like I am. So there's that. I think the Damn. last one I put. Well, I can't say the last one I played was ten. The last one I played on the consoles was ten. I mean, I did just okay. play, I did just play the beta for fourteen. The I am, yeah, I, I am not. I've never played the MMOs. Uh, it's it's not really my bag. Um, I am getting the HD remaster of the ten and ten two for the PS3. Uh, I, and I did get the, I did get the collector's edition for that one as well. Cool. 
So that would be that would be awesome. And I think I just downloaded Final Fantasy 6 and 4 from PSN. Nice. So I play those too. But I've, I I beat the living crap out of 6 though. That's that's probably my all-time favorite Final Fantasy. Which is odd because most everybody's like, "Oh, 7's the best one ever." And uh, no, it's good but it doesn't hold a candle to 6. You know, I don't know if I ever played 6. I played 7. Here's it. Here's my argument. <laughs> here's here's my argument for six though. People who are familiar with the materia system in seven, if you, if you've played six before and then went to seven or played seven and then went to six, the Esper system in six is very very fucking close to how the materia works in seven. The only difference is that when you learn a skill from an Esper, it's static to your character. It doesn't travel with the Esper. Okay. Which is really cool because with the materia, if you knock, you know, if you take the materia off the character, you lose the ability, right? Right. Uh, but with six, the espers will skill to your character, and then you can move that esper to another one, and then relearn those skills. But those skills are static, so when you take it off, it, you know, there's no detriment to your character. You, it makes an interesting point because then you can turn your whole team into this like monster magic physical attack team, and there's nothing that can kill them. Um, but you really gotta work at it for that really do so there was that and um i was playing some old school threads of fate which is a little known squaresoft rpg on the playstation uh it's a short game if you haven't played it before i I, i'm not really going to go into it a whole heck of a lot because i i don't want to spoil it for people it's a very very niche rpg um check it out if you haven't already done so it's kind of up there with legend of mana for me legend of mana is probably my favorite PlayStation game. Um, there was that. And then Twitch live streaming. I was playing around with Twitch yesterday. Live stream for about three hours. Uh, I jumped between three different games. Uh, AVG and Adventures, Bioshock Infinite. I was playing Terraria. Had some people on Facebook and random viewers getting a hold of me. Um, apparently I did it right, so <laughs> that's a good thing. That's, they a, were, that's a bonus. <laughs> yeah, they were, they were seeing it. They were hearing it. I was getting good feedback from what I had. Uh, obviously, I have a potty mouth when I play video games. So if you know you don't like hearing you know American justice and fuck this and fuck that everywhere, then don't listen to me playing. But uh, the experience was really good. I I like I like what you can do. The only thing I didn't like was I don't think Twitch archives your footage because it didn't archive any of mine. I think and there's I something you have to set up on your account to do that. Yeah, and I think that's what I didn't do, so I fucked that up. But I'll have to go back and check because I thought I remembered seeing something when I was setting up Twitch, and I I blew past. And I was like, oh, I don't need to listen. I don't, you know, I don't need to RTFM. I'm a pro. And turns out you kind of have to RTFM. So yeah. we need to go back and fix that. But yeah, um, that kind of blends into what Joe and I were talking about earlier, which was you know live streaming to Twitch and then recording to YouTube as well. You know, getting all our our channel set up and all that kind of stuff and picking a day where we're just going to play a game for three hours, three or four, you know, whatever. doesn't matter really how long. And uh, I don't know what day works good for you, man. We're going to have to discuss that offline because I have no idea either. Yeah, I... Because, I, I mean, it's kind of... Oh, I checked my calendar. I was like, daylight savings time is on Sunday, asshole. So yes, yeah, I don't... I don't <laughs> Yeah, there you go. There's a remi- friendly reminder from the Whippin' podcast. Daylight savings time. You might want to change your clocks. Yep, and you lose that hour this week, which sucks. Ah, good. I love when I lose hours. So one of the other things I was playing this week, um, and I didn't play too much of this, but I could talk about some of the stuff I played before, since they're actually letting people talk about it now. Elder Scrolls Online. Um, sounds like they dropped the NDA. Sounds like they're letting people talk about the game after the beta weekend that they just had. I hopped in the game, I think Friday night, I hopped into the game just to see how, how busy the servers were because um, it sounds like they were trying to get a, as many people in there as they could. I thought the servers were going to be pretty much unplayable. I was running around the area I was in. Needless to say, I was still pretty early in the game. Um, I ran around a little bit, did a couple of quests, and just realized I had kind of done this already in the last beta I was in. I really wasn't in the mood to do it again. I really didn't enjoy it the last time I did it. And that was pretty much it for me in the Elder Scrolls Online beta this weekend. Ooh, that's not... that Joe, that's not sounding very positive. So, it's... 
the graphics look good. The voiceovers are really nice. The presentation is there. It just the gameplay is just missing something. And I and I and I can't put my finger on it. I don't know if it's just I don't I don't like the combat. I don't know if it's they've tried to mash up the MMO and the single player, and because they've tried to do this mash, they don't have the outcome isn't a good equalization of either of them. I, I keep feeling like I need to say this again. Like I, I, I'm wondering if this still has something to do with the fact that we're expecting Elder Scrolls to be something that it's not in this case. Yeah, I, I just I don't know. But, I mean, I ran around a little bit, and the game ran fine. And, like I said, it looks good. I'm just – I just can't get into it like I was into Skyrim. So a, yeah, and that's that's what scares me the most about it. And and you know, I've I've we all know I, I have like a thousand and forty eight hours in Skyrim. Right. I I love that Skyrim experience, and that's what I would expect from ESO. And if and, I don't and, if I don't get that, I'm going to be severely disappointed. And and you're not going to get that. Fuck. I, I can guarantee that right now. You're not going to get that. That's not what the Fuck. game is. And. It's just, I don't, I don't know. It's just, it's a shame. It was, this was the one MMO I was really stoked for this year. I mean, I was stoked, I was stoked for it last year. I mean, when it was supposed to come out, um, then it was delayed, and I was like, all right, I'm still going to get this. And I'm playing the last couple of betas. It's just, um, yeah, I, I, yeah, I just I, really I, haven't been able to get into it. Yeah, I, I, and my sentiments are the same. I still, I, I have not played ESO, uh, but I do remember when I heard about it. Like I said before, I think it was like two or th- like three or four episodes ago when I heard about. it, I'm like, dude, Skyrim Online, ah! and now we don't have that. Yeah, boo, boo. I'm gonna cry. So, a couple other things I played this weekend. Yesterday, um, Kim and I played um, Walking Dead Monopoly. Um, Walking Dead Monopoly plays just like normal Monopoly. Uh, there's really nothing different to the rules or anything. The board's different. The your playing pieces are different. Um, the cards obviously are so, you know have different stuff on them. Um, the board looked really nice. The game gameplay was pretty cool. It would have been kind of interesting if they would have had maybe something a little different for the houses and the hotels rather than just the normal look of the houses and the hotels. Um, I think they actually called them like called them something different in the instructions, but they looked like houses and hotels, and it would have been neat if they would have had them maybe look like what they had said and they were. Wait, 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 or wait, maybe wait, wait, be like broken or like or they that they, they weren't full little red red and black you know pieces. They they should have been partially destroyed or something. You know. Wait. Okay. So were the tokens Walking Dead themed? Yeah, the tokens were. Everything was Walking Dead themed, but the actual plastic pieces of the houses and the hotels. I what would the say. F- what the fuck is that? So what? that was. I would say that would be my only disappointment with the game. How does that happen? I mean, the cards were all based around the Walking Dead. All, each area on the board was something that was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, those houses and hotels just kind of threw me. I was like, that's kind of a bummer that they that they could have done maybe. Something a little different for for this for that version of the game, um, you know, and then they didn't. So, ah uh, man, that's disappointing. Yeah, I was a little bummed about that. And then Kim and I were playing a lot of. It seems like our go-to game recently is Zen Pinball Two on the PS4. Um, we've been doing a lot of split-screen pinball playing um, lately, and basically you you can set your limit of what you want the game to go to, like maybe ten million, twenty million as your score. And then each time you lose a ball, you lose 10% of your score. And you can set that percentage of loss to whatever you want, 5, 10, 20, 25. We normally play it. We normally play whoever gets a 10 million first wins. Um, and if you lose a ball, it's 10% of your score. So when you're getting up into the 8, 9 million and you lose a ball and you're losing 900,000 points, that kind of sucks. Oh, yeah, man. So we had some really good games going, though, yesterday. It was probably split 50-50 as far as who won. It sounds like you guys do like extreme pinball, right? Something that we just got into. Uh, we really haven't played much pinball like this before. I mean, we've done some Zen pinball before, some Zen pinball too, like back on the PS3. 
but not like we've been doing the past couple of weeks. I mean, where it's just like where we're just like really enjoying a lot of the different um, tables that we have, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's about it. Hmm. So I got two things really quick. Um, they these are coming in live from fans. Um, this one just came in from Facebook, so I will share this, and it's just to emphasize the gaming nature of the show. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I thought that was really neat. Uh, a friend of mine found that, and she was like, "Ah, oh, you got to take a look at this. And um, I do have the second picture ready to go. If I think I'm ready. Well, hang on. I don't know. My screen share isn't picking up. I may have to just full screen this thing. All right, start screen share. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So this is 100% an inside joke between me and somebody else. Uh, We decided that her autobiography was going to be about how she's torn between her love for Macy's and to not want to be at Macy's anymore. It's kind of a paradox. And the only reason why I agreed to do it was because she said she liked the show. Our show? Yeah. That's cool. Yep. So this is actually going to be her autobiography. It's called Both Sides of the Register, and it's going to be about a woman who has a torn personality between the love for her job and the love for buying products at said place. And clearly we accentuated the detail of the uh, breast area, which is always good. And this is actually how people look when you go to Macy's. You just lose all your, you just a twig. Maybe I should start working there. I need to lose a little weight. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, this may be like the ultimate weight loss plan. Just just go there. All right. For final part of the show, what we want to play, I'm kind of looking forward to uh, The Walking the Walking Dead. I got The Walking Dead on my brain. Dude, you, you got dead things. I know. South Park Stick of Truth. The <gasps> role-playing game comes out tomorrow. <gasps> Walt, if you're listening, dude, all three of us need to get this damn game. Yeah, I know, but I have no time to damn play it because I got so many other games backlogged right now. I, I, what, I, what I'd like to do is I'm interested to see. Uh, I'm sure some of the reviews will probably start coming out at midnight tonight. I'm sure that's when the embargoes are lifted for people. But I'm interested to hear um, how long the game actually takes right now, and I have not heard that out there yet. Wait, what was that one site that we, hit, that we found? How I long to beat? Yeah, yeah. It's not there. Okay. It's it's still too new of a game. Oh, oh. So wait, yeah, that's that's actually from uh crowdsource, right? That's not from people who actually reviewed the game or anything else like that. Correct. Okay, okay, never mind. I believe I, I, so. I mean I was in the right train of thought, but I kinda just wasn't thinking, you know, like this is what it's for. So This is actually on my list to play, too. So, yeah, I was trying to see if any, if I could find anything, anybody posting anything about how long it is right now, and I don't see anything yet out here. Okay. Doing a quick Google search. So Google. I'm, sure have to, I'm sure there'll be somebody will be posting some stuff here the next um, day or so. The Goog. So that's about it. I think we are at the end of an episode, unless if there's anything you want to mention or what you want to play. You want, you said South Park's as well. Yeah, South Park's on there. Um, I'm probably going to be doing... Well, I gotta, if I'm going to finish Final Fantasy 13. well, Lightning Returns. Uh, I did manage to buy the uh, international edition of Star Ocean Last Hope for PS3. Oh, wow. Um, but I found one that was brand new, too, so I was like, holy shit! Um... Those games are so epic, though. The Star Ocean games are huge, huge games. Yeah, I've never played any of those. I've heard about those before, though. So, uh, Star Ocean 2 for the PlayStation, um, I think I easily wrapped in about 200 hours into it. Uh, The main problem is I'm one of those level-holics with those kinds of games, and with with that version of Star Ocean, uh, each character can be maxed out at 255. Wow. Yeah. 
yeah, that was one hell of a task. Um, the Star Ocean Till the End of Time, which was for the PS2, I never actually finished that one, but that game was stupid, stupid, stupid long. And I can only imagine that this one is going to be ridiculously long as well. My only gripe? Why the hell is it only broadcasting at 720p? Every other game I have for my PS3 is at 1080, and that one's at 720. I don't understand that. And there's a noticeable difference, too. Yeah, and I would dr- think there would be. I don't know why that nuts. would be the case, though. It drives me nuts. I hate that. It, it, you can tell like the, the upscaling on on the graphics. I mean, it just... I, that blows my mind. Once you get used to seeing things in 1080p, and then you get that downsize, so then it upscales back up, you notice the difference, and it, it's kind of jarring to your eyes. I can always tell whenever I walk into the living room and Kim has on a channel that's not HD, I'm like, why don't you have the HD channel on? What do you mean? <laughs> like, that is not HD. If you can't tell that's not HD, you then your glasses are way dirty, woman. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so, I mean, there's there's definitely South Park. I'm probably going to try to do some uh, Star Ocean, uh, Lightning Returns, and I've got animes I want to watch, too. So oh. I, actually, I found, um, I did a post a while back on Facebook, and I think I put it on Twitter. I found uh, the entire Better Man series at a local pawn shop, and they sold hmm. it for, they sold it to me for like 20 bucks, man. And I haven't been able to find this anime for, since, like, 2001. No, nobody had it on eBay. Nobody had it on any, like, the, the you know, crunchy roll or anything else like that. It was never on there. And I found the entire box set. And the discs, I mean, the box was kind of scratched, but the discs were in near mint condition. Uh, so I was pretty pumped about that. But you, you can't finish that series in one setting. That's going to be, like, a five-setting thing. So I'm definitely going to be watching that. That's going to be my week coming up. Cool. I'm going to be working on Dang and Rampa. Um, who knows if I'm going to pick up South Park or not. Um, I'd like to jump back to Persona 4. Dude, if Walt, if Walt and me are picking that up, man, you got to get it. Uh, yeah, I know. I know. So I got I got I I can't stop playing Dang and Rampa though. I got I want to get through that one. Uh, you know what? Let me add that to my list because I think you've convinced me to go ahead and buy it. I'm going to hop on PSN and and throw it on my wish list. So so I'm picking it right. up. I think that's about it. We are at the end of an episode. Mm. Send us some emails. Let us know how we're doing. Let us know if there's anything you'd like to hear. What I'm playing now at gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at what I'm playing now. Check out the website www.whatimplayingnow.com. Dub. And <laughs> hopefully we'll have a we'll try to maybe get a Twitch channel going this week. And, and start doing some Let's Plays and some playthroughs and stuff like that and see what we can do in that department. But other than that, I think that's it. That's right. That is All it. Right. Everybody, go play some games, and we'll let you know what we're playing next. Have a good one. Bye, guys. <laughs>